Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number one for Unit 1 VCE Physics, uh, Basic Electric Circuits. Today we will be looking at uh, Electrostatics Basics. I'd like to begin by looking at charge. And we know that charge exists because we've seen it in experimental observations. So what we do know is that all matter is made up of atoms. And if we recall from junior science, the structure of our atom, we've got our nucleus. That's made up of uh, the positively charged protons in the center. And with them are the neutrons carrying no charge. Circling around them are the electrons which carry a negative charge. Now we know that rubbing some objects together will cause them to become charged. For example, if you rub a balloon on your hair or on a woolen jumper, you can make it stick to a wall. But what's really going on in this situation? Well, what's happening is either there's an excess of electrons and the object has become negatively charged, or we have an excess of protons where it's become positively charged. Now, the rubbing process is not going to create any charge. What it is doing is it's just transferring electrons. Either extra electrons are gained or electrons are given away. So in the case of becoming negatively charged, it's going to gain electrons. Here it's going to donate electrons. Um, so for example, I mentioned the balloon on your woolen jumper. Now what's happening is that as we rub the two together, the wool is donating electrons onto the balloon. As a result, the balloon ends up with more electrons than it would usually have and that means that it's going to carry a negative charge. The flip side of that is that the wool has given away some electrons and so it will now be positively charged. In order to do anything with this, we need some form of units that we can measure in. Now, it's called an elementary charge and that's just the charge for a single electron. Um, and so, you know, we would give, assign that as just one, the charge of a single electron. Now this is a very, very, very small unit and protons would obviously carry the opposite charge um, but the same magnitude. Um, so what we do use is an SI unit called the Coulomb. Now a Coulomb is the charge that's carried if you had a big bunch of electrons, 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electrons to be exact. Now if we take the inverse of this, then that will give us the charge for one single electron. Um, so a single electron would be 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The reason that we need a large charge like a Coulomb is that when we're measuring electrical currents, we're not going to be measuring per single electron, otherwise our current readings would be just ginormous. So we need a large uh, unit in order to measure that in appropriate values. Now, Charles Coulomb investigated the forces acting on charges. Like We're talking way back in um, mid to late 1700s. And he basically, yeah, looked, looked at the interactions, looked at the forces between them and was able to give us our first real published um, way of analysing it to give quantitative values, that is, to be able to produce numbers. Um, so basically what he figured out was that these point charges, or if we've got two charges that are in space and brought near each other, the forces on them depended on the distance between them, how far away they were, and the size of the charges. So basically, the closer you brought them, the larger the force was going to be, whether that was attraction or repulsion, depending on whether you have like or unlike charges. Also, increasing the size of the charge, so having a larger charge, meant that there was also a larger force. So his law was really summed up in this equation that the force equals k q1 q2 over r squared. What that means is, well k is a constant, called Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared. q is the magnitude of 
charge one, Q2 is the magnitude of car, uh, charge two, and R is the distance between the center of each charge. Now that will be in units of meters. So if we look at Coulomb's law, and let's consider we've got two charges, they're experiencing F. What's going to happen if we change the size of one of the charges? So let's say we double the positive charge. What that means is we're multiplying this charge by 2. The effect that's going to have on the overall equation is that it's going to double the size of the force. So therefore the force equal and opposite that they will apply on each other is 2F. And if we double both charges, then you've got 2 times 2 giving us an increase of a magnitude of 4. Okay, same deal if we analyze it in terms of distance. If we double the distance, what happens is we end up with 2R all squared. So squaring that double component means it's going to end up with 4R squared on the bottom or a quarter of the original force. So it's proportionally um, the size of the force is proportional to the charge. It's inversely proportional squared to the distance. So let's consider an example. We've got two Van de Graaff machines. They're 50 centimeters apart. We rev both of them up. They're charging about 3 microcoulombs. Determine the size of the force. So using that equation and substituting in, we've got 9 times 10 to the 9, that's our constant, times charge 1, times charge 2, time divided by the distance squared. Comes out at about 3.24, forgot to put my units in, but that should be in Newtons. Now, without having to calculate it, what would happen if the distance was doubled? If we double the distance, well we just talked about that a moment ago, we'd end up with a quarter of the force, so the force would be less than 1 here. What if we would to halve one of the charges. If we halve one charge, that will halve the force. What if both of them were halved? Will it be a half and a half? So we'd halve it twice over or we'd get a quarter of the force. Now, charges are going to create an electric field around them. And you know, this is why the charges interact and they act from a distance. It's because of the field that is around them. So when they come into contact, when another charge gets into that field, it interacts with the field and the result is a force on that charge. So I just want to outline th three major rules when we're looking at uh, electric fields. So the first rule is the direction is defined as the direction a posit positively charged particle is going to move. So if we think of those point charges, we've got a positive point charge here. Anywhere that I was to bring another positive charge, it would be repelled and it would go away from that charge. Therefore, the direction is out from the positive charge. Likewise, if it's negative, anywhere I put a negative charge, it's going to move directly toward, sorry, positive charge, it's going to move directly towards the negative charge. Second one, the number of the lines is proportional to the magnitude of the field. So basically if we had some charge Q and we drew that many lines in, if we had double the charge we'd represent that by drawing twice as many lines. If it was three times the charge we'd need three times the number of lines. So the density of lines represents how strong it is. Third rule is that field lines never cross and they always begin and they end at the charge. So we can't have charges, uh, for, sorry, field lines just beginning somewhere in midair and they certainly cannot cross. So, so just looking at what would happen if we had two charges near each other. There would be the force of attraction. We'd have field lines going out from the positive and into the negative. This is called a dipole. 
and we'd have field lines kind of similar to what a magnetic field would look around a bar magnet if they were the north and south poles. If they are like charges, then we're going to have this little null area here, okay, where there's going to be no field, full of repulsion. The only difference if they were negatively charged would be the arrows would point into the charges. The field shape would be exactly the same. It's just that the direction of the field would be the opposite. Okay, that's it for now. So I'll see you in class shortly.